After NFL free agency, it appears Patrick Sertan and Damari Mathis will headline the Broncos cornerback room. Is this a reason for Broncos fans to be secure, or is there areas of concern with cornerback depth? You get that and much more on today's brand new episode, Locked on Broncos. You are locked on Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's happening, Broncos country? Welcome into a brand new episode, Locked On Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you so much to everybody in Broncos country for tuning in and making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day every single day. We appreciate you so much. Hope you had a great Easter Sunday. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. BetterHelp connects you with a licensed therapist who can take you on that journey of self-discovery from wherever you are. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Lockdown today to get 10% off your first month. And to get the latest episode as soon as it's available of Lockdown Broncos, subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to your podcast. I'm your host, as always, Cody Rourke, Broncos reporter for Mile High Sports. Joined alongside, as always, by my co-host and good friend, Sarah Bettinger, site expert, predominantly orange. Dot com. Sarah, we are continuing our state of the Broncos, looking position by position, going through the offense, defense, and eventually special teams, and seeing if Denver is better off right now going into 2023 than they were at this time last year going into the 2022 NFL season. I tell you what, cornerback is an interesting one. I'm sure we'll have some thoughts where we agree. I wonder if there's some areas maybe where we see differently at this position. Yeah, and obviously excited to hear from everybody in the comments as well where you think the state of the Broncos is here because I remember reading recently, Cody, from Mike Kliss. We'll talk about the draft in a bit, but he thinks maybe could could the cornerback position be that top pick for the Broncos this year? We'll talk about that in a bit, but let's start off. We'll talk about, obviously, the guys who left the team or were let go by the team. Ronald Darby, a starter in 2021, a starter in 2022, obviously struggled through some injuries, Cody. But I think you and I and everybody else can kind of see when Darby was out there on the field, it felt just like the Broncos pass defense as a whole was was better, not necessarily better than the alternative to, you know, like we're going to talk about Damari Mathis plenty, but Ronald Darby made that group better. Unfortunate that we didn't really get to see him healthy because I think that's kind of a big loss on paper, right? It's a he, he's a big money free agent. This is not a and not a guy that the Broncos kind of just took a shot on. Like he got a three year, thirty million dollar deal, former second round draft pick, obviously a well decorated player. And then come to Denver two seasons in a row, struggling a bit with injuries. And of course, the Broncos made him one of their cap casualties before free agency. So Ronald Darby, one of those key departures on the defense as a whole, losing a starter there. I mean, and not only that, when they lost him in the regular season in, in week five against the Colts that torn ACL, it was a big blow. I mean, that was just that was a bad week in Denver. That was like probably the worst week of the entire Broncos season. And then there were some other bad moments that happened, but I felt like week five was really when the roller coaster kind of came off the track a little bit, came off the rails. And everyone's like, okay, hey, this season, okay, it ain't going to be what it is. And you lose Garrett Bowles in that game. You lose Ronald Darby. We'll talk about Damari Mathis and really him stepping up. They also released this offseason Lamar Jackson, which to me, Sarah, I was a little surprised, right? And I'm not coming out and saying like Lamar Jackson was going to be the next big thing here in Denver. But for me, I, I look at what Lamar Jackson did against the Kansas City Chiefs. He had to step in when Damari Mathis went out with a concussion. And I thought he did pretty well against Marquez Valdez Scantling. He had a couple of pass breakups in that game. He also had one on Travis Kelsey. He's a long, rangy corner. To me, I was a little surprised when I saw that they were moving on from him at that room. But, you know, while they moved on from Darby, they moved on from Lamar Jackson. They did add a cornerback, and that is Tremont Smith. But I want to get your thoughts on this, Sarah, because when you look at Tremont Smith, yes, he had two interceptions off of Dak Prescott in the game, but he only played 17% of the Texans' defensive snaps last year. He played 78% of their special team snaps. So is he really a true cornerback three, or is that really up in the air right now? Because when I look at the writing on the wall, to me, he doesn't he doesn't scream, I'm cornerback three here. I'm going to be the next guy in the rotation. I, I just don't see that here based on what we've seen historically in his career and really where Denver is at right now with their depth. I think it could be an entirely new a, a guy on the roster that stepped up late last year, I think could be cornerback three. We'll talk about them a little bit later. 
That's that's a player right there, Cody, that I think is it's a wild card, right? And obviously you really want to see the Broncos special teams be upgraded, right? The Broncos, they've been terrible on special teams. And I think, you know, Sean Payton kind of alluded to it when he was talking about how hard the offense was to watch, right? He, I mean, the special teams was grouped in there. It's not like the there was any one area other than the defense that was exempt from kind of criticism last year. And even the defense had its, had its moments, right? But Tremont Smith is somebody that he's going to upgrade your special teams unit. You watch him at Houston, you watch him at Kansas City, he flies down the field in the coverage units, Cody. I believe he had three forced fumbles last season alone, and that doesn't come defensively, right? I mean, he's popping the ball loose on punt return, and he's coming down the field faster than anybody else. And so you watch those things, and you see the two interceptions against Dak Prescott. By the way, maybe a good idea if the Broncos play the Cowboys, just throw Caden Stearns and Tremont Smith out on the field, and it'd be like, you know, the, the coach from Waterboy just saying Gatorade, you know, like that kind of thing. Maybe that has that kind of effect on Dak Prescott or something. But whatever the case, I agree with you. I think he, I don't know that he's necessarily cornerback three. Maybe the pro scouting department in Denver sees something in Tremont Smith in that limited snap count, like you mentioned, 17%. Maybe they see something in that, that 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 they're like, hey, there's there's something to this guy here, right? I mean, he's got the speed. He's obviously got the playmaking ability. We, I mean, we know we he, two interceptions last year. He's popping the ball loose on punt return coverage. He's also a good kickoff returner himself. So we know he's got that playmaker gene. But can he? If, if you're one injury away, right? If if Pat Sertan goes down, is Tremont Smith going to step into a, a role? And we've talked about that on previous episodes. Is that something that the Broncos really want to mess with? I'd be very fascinated to hear. I, I would love to hear more about some of these guys. You know, what does Vance Joseph envision from him? What is Sean Payton envisioning with this move? Cody, we haven't got to hear from those guys, and I don't know that we will until whenever the draft or whatever the case may be there. But I think I agree with you on that. I'm not sure. I'm not sold that he's cornerback three just yet. Who could be cornerback three for the Broncos? Is he already on the roster? There might be an under-the-radar gem we'll talk about. You'll get that on today's episode, Locked On Broncos. This show is brought to you by our friends over there at BetterHelp. Getting to know yourself can be a lifelong process, especially because we're always growing and we're always changing in life, from whether we're a kid to a teenager to an adult or even as we get even older. Therapy is all about deepening your self-awareness and understanding because sometimes we don't know what we want or why we react to the way that we do to certain things until we talk through things. For me, I've utilized better help in the past as well. Connect me with the therapist instantly. And I got a chance to meet my therapist, to talk with them one-on-one in an intake. And after that, I determined like, hey, this is a good fit for me. So I stuck through it. And my therapist helped me in a variety of ways, whether it's just daily decision-making, balancing work, life, career, things like that. Not to mention, if you don't mesh or vibe well with your therapist, you can change easily at no cost. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try today. It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Discover your potential with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash locked on today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P.com slash locked on. Is the Denver Broncos depth chart at cornerback really a depth chart, Cody, or is it just a chart? Uh, I think that's something we need to talk about here as we talk about who's going to be cornerback three. And of course, we're, what we're talking about when we say cornerback three, you have two starters right on the outside. That's projected right now. Obviously, Pat Sertan will be one of them. Damari Mathis, the other. We're not talking about cornerback three as in K1 Williams, who's going to be your starting nickel. We're talking about the number one backup corner on this roster and hey it may end up being maybe k1 williams maybe he could kick out to that outside spot if need be cody but i don't think that's really how the broncos want this thing constructed i i, I gotta think they've got other plans in mind we did see some promising young guys though in that 2022 season i know there was a lot of uh, a lot of injuries happening right and a lot of injuries happening on both sides of the ball in every phase of the game really I mean, how many long snappers did the broncos cycle through last year i'm sure at some point on lockdown broncos we're going to be talking about Fraboni, the long snapper we haven't given him much airtime yet <laughs> but but hey uh cornerback three 
the discussion at this point in time, it has to begin with guys that are on this roster because right now Broncos look like they're pretty well done in free agency. We'll see what the draft holds. What do you think of these young guys that the Broncos have on the roster, Cody? You're a DB. Yeah, you know, that's just that's in your blood. What do you see from these young guys that you feel they can be maybe a cornerback three in 2023? I think we have to take a look at that room, right? We talked about Tremont Smith a little bit. There's Jaquan McMillan, who, Sarah, I'm just gonna I'm gonna peg it right here on this episode of Lockdown Broncos. I'm going to say, in my opinion, right now, at least on paper, I feel like he might be the under the radar gem who could be that cornerback three, that number one backup option on the outside. And I don't think I have to explain why. Now, granted, it's a small sample size. I could be getting ahead of myself here, but I recognize DB play. Jaquan McMillan did enough in practice on the practice squad throughout the season to impress Christian Parker, to impress the Broncos defense is zero Evro last year to the point. They're like, Hey, you know what? It is the regular season finale. They're going to be, you know, the chargers are going to be playing their starters here, which we all say like, why the hell did they do that? He's going to go out there and he's going to guard the Mike Williams. You know, one of the best playmaking wide receivers in the national football league, one of the best 50, 50 guys in the entire NFL in recent memory. He is that damn good. And he went out there and he held his own. He had a pass defense against him. In my opinion, he got robbed of an interception in that game. Even the replay showed that he intercepted it, but the officials for some reason did not overturn that. He came up and he tackled well. He had seven tackles in that game. To me, he's a young guy who's got a lot to learn, and he's returning with a position coach who is returning in Christian Parker, who saw that and who has seen that. And it's easy to say. I'd say Jaquan McMillan kind of has elevated himself above a guy like you know Fayon Hicks, who was drafted by the Broncos in a late rounder in last year's NFL draft. He's kind of elevated himself as an undrafted guy above a guy who was drafted as a seventh rounder. And you know, there's a, you know another guy like Delonte Hood who was signed to a futures contract. But then there's even a saying Bassey, but Sarah, like for me, I, I look at a saying Bassey. I know he can play on the outside. He's done it. He did it in Vic Fangio's defense in Denver during his rookie season. But I think he's done a really good job inside the nickel or the dime. If K1 is, you know, goes down or if you need a guy to play inside the dime in a dime package opposite of K1, he's proven to be reliable, not only gets a run, but against the pass as well. In my he- opinion, Jaquan McMillan is my cornerback three favorite here. I- I'm eager for your thoughts. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you see somebody else? Or should the Broncos maybe look at bringing in a veteran to solidify that spot? Because there are a multitude of guys who are vets who have yet to sign with an NFL team so far. I would love to see them go after somebody like that, Cody. Somebody that you can feel pretty decent about, or at least somebody who's a worthwhile like risk reward type of option. Like I don't know everybody every free agent corner that's available. I know like Shaquille Griffin, formerly of the C- Seattle Seahawks, right? He played for Seattle and then he got signed by Jacksonville to a big money deal in free agency. Didn't work out there, so he got cut this offseason. That's a that's an option right there. I would say you get him on a one year deal. You, you just never know when these guys are going to play, right? You know, former Bra- Bronco Bradley Roby is out there. There's a number of other former New Orleans Saints guys. If you need to look at that, I'm sure Christian Parker has some connections out there. I think Bryce Callahan's a free agent, although obviously you'd prefer him to be in the nickel. Uh, but at the same time, I, I'm with you on that. I think getting a free agent in there, getting somebody who's proven. It just helps you know, like you you get into a situation where during the season somebody does get hurt and you have this guy to fall back on. Maybe Ronald Darby comes back when he's healthy. I have no idea what's going to transpire, what's going to unfold. I, there's, I would love to see that though. I'd love to see the Broncos draft somebody and bring in a veteran option at this position. I know you can't just go out there and make every single move you want to make. And the Broncos do have limited draft capital. They're down to, I think, under $8 million in salary cap space right now. But you can move some things around. I think you could. I think you could figure out a way to make it happen. And again, it really depends on where this scouting department and coaching staff come together on a player like Jaquan McMillan. I think he's the, he's the guy right now that you look to as, is he going to save us a, a having to go after a veteran in free agency? Is he going to save us from, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know that he's necessarily going to prevent that Cody, but I'm with you. Like you see the talent that he has, you see the aggressiveness that he plays with that, you know, guys are undrafted, right? They're smaller. They're not necessarily super hyped in the pre-draft process. Well, somebody like Jaquan McMillan, yeah, he's going to have that big chip on his shoulder and why? 
that dude was an all American at East Carolina of all places. I mean, he's like, I'm an all American at East Carolina and I didn't get drafted. Like, what do I got to do? You know? So he goes out there in the chargers game. He has the interception. I'm going to call it an interception, Cody. I feel like he deserves that. He, and if he's listening to this podcast, you know what? That was an interception. We all know it. We all saw it. So I think I, he's the wild card right there. If, if the scouting department feels good about him, that would be exciting. I think it, it, a lot of fans would be upset, though, wouldn't they, Cody? Because they want to see the name out that, that you feel comfortable with a name rather than a guy that your scouting department believes in. But a lot of times, a la, you know, Chris Harris Jr., when your scouting department believes in a guy, that could end up being a cornerstone piece if you give them the right opportunity at the right timing. I, I think another thing to mention with that, and I'm glad you brought up the fact because, yeah, I feel like even like draft analysts, right? I think everybody gets so enamored by the name of a player that they lose sight of maybe like environment, scheme fit. And, and I'll tell you this, like I, I'll be dead honest about Jaquan McMillan. In training camp, I was watching him and I was just like, you know, Denver's got so many guys, you know, with Darby, with Damari Mathis, with these other guys right now that are coming in and competing. They just have so many more guys that are ahead of him. And it wasn't anything against a guy like Jaquan McMillan, but as we notice often at times, the undrafted guys are so many, and it's hard to pinpoint exactly who you think will be the undrafted rookie free agent that makes the 53 man roster. Obviously that was not the case for him, but he stuck around in the practice squad and then got transitioned up to be able to play and start in a big time game that the Broncos won 31 to 28. And without a couple of big plays he had, you maybe can make the argument. Maybe they would have lost that game, but we can look at all these, angles to me it doesn't look like on paper right now it's like okay the broncos cornerback that that's a little bit of a concern here i know we're going to share our thoughts we're going to share our verdict do the broncos actually get better on paper in comparison to last year i know it's something we're going to answer on today's episode locked on broncos this episode is brought to you by our friends over there at fan duel sportsbook grand slams no hitters and double plays are back and there's no better place to get in on the mlb action than fan duel america's number one sportsbook that's because right now new customers can step up to the player they know. So at first bet up to $1,000, just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up, place your first bet, and get up to $1,000 back in bonus bets if you don't win. So don't miss your chance to get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 when you join FanDuel today. Just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up. FanDuel, the official partner of Major League Baseball. Did the Denver Broncos get better at the cornerback position this offseason in comparison to last year? Thank you so much, Broncos country, for tuning in and making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day. Every single day you can get this podcast for free and available everywhere you get your podcast. You can watch us every single day, Monday through Friday, or like I said, on YouTube, you can get the episodes early. They all premiere Sunday through Thursday for the Monday through Friday format, which drops an audio version on your favorite audio podcasting platforms. We appreciate you so much for rocking with us. We're building up this week. We're going to have a third round Thursday. We're going to ask Broncos fans to send in their third round mock draft that they're going to submit to us. And we're going to answer the best ones on air here on Thursday's episode of the show. But as always, Broncos country, you are every part of the show going forward. We appreciate you so much for all your interaction, your comments in the YouTube section down below. Thank you so much, Sarah. Let's continue on with the conversation, right? We're, we've been taking every position to court so far. Broncos country has answered their thoughts as well, but ultimately, when it comes down to whether or not the Broncos cornerback room is better in 2023, Sarah, I must ask you, my friend, what is your verdict? Did they get better? Are they better? Or do they still need to get better? I'm curious for your thoughts. Well, I think my answer is going to take a little interesting turn here, Cody. And me dancing around yes or no does not indicate that it's a no. I would say they're in a better long-term position, uh, in my opinion, based on where they were last year. Remember last year at this time, you had Ronald Darby, you, you had Pat Sertan obviously going into year two, you signed Kwan Williams in free agency. I think there was a situation there where was Ronald Darby a long-term option? You kind of hoped that he could be, but at the same time, knowing his injury history, you also were a bit realistic about that. And now you have Pat Sertan, you have Damari Mathis, who I know I've said this before and I'll continue to say, you know, 
progression in the NFL and guys, players specifically getting better. It's not always linear, right? It doesn't just go like this. It, it doesn't always just players don't just always consistently get better. It's going to be more like one of those things where there's, you know, peaks and valleys sort of thing on a chart. I believe, though, that Damari Mathis experienced a lot of those peaks and valleys as a rookie and what he learned last year, I think is going to equip him to be ready to be a high quality starter. I'm banking on his athletic traits. I'm banking on the valuable experience that he got as a rookie. And I'm banking on the coaching of Christian Parker in that defensive back group to really progress Damari Mathis as a long-term starter at that position. So in that regard, I'm going to say yes, especially because you're bringing back K1 Williams. I'm going to say yes, that, that the position is better and better off long-term. I, I like that you mentioned that too, because I, I think we always look at things from a current lens, like, you know, how is it going to impact the present, which, you know, last year was like, okay, hey, you got Ronald Darby, you got Patrick Tennis, two pretty damn good corners. We saw enough from Demari Mathis, and look, obviously George Payton believes that he's a starting cornerback. He, he went on KOA during the NFL, and uh, I believe it was a scouting combo, not the annual meeting. Yep. But he went on with uh, our good friend Ryan Edwards, and he pretty much told him that, you know, hey, we believe that Demari is a starting cornerback in the NFL. He is going to get every opportunity to start this upcoming season. And I would say maybe the challenge right now in, in the perspective of that is, that, okay, look, you have Patrick Sertan, who we all know is a rising superstar in the National Football League. It is evident his trajectory is great. And while he had a stellar season last year, Sertan had a couple of moments where it's like, okay, you know, he can get got sometimes, but that's okay. That's normal because how we looked at Sertan was, okay, he's had a couple of rough games. How does he respond? Like his maturity level and his response and his attention to detail, he got back to it, right? He didn't let that affect him uh, because I think in a game like that where, you know, for specifically speaking where that game against Devontae Adams, Devontae is going to do that to people. He's going to do it some best. He's done it to Jalen Ramsey. Sertan's gotten the best of him at times. And obviously, like the, the series, if we're looking at it from a baseball standpoint, because that's now starting up, the series is 1 1 between those guys. Denver obviously needs to win some games. Yeah, I'm not talking about you know, the Broncos, I'm talking about Sertan versus Adams. But then, you know, DJ Moore had a, had a good game against him when they played the Carolina Panthers. A young guy, and especially a guy who has been tested, you know, throughout the two years of his NFL career, and he's always been the guy who's always kind of exceeded and, and come out ahead of those matchups. It's good to see him have moments like that, and bounce back, which is what we were looking for. Can he bounce back after a performance where he gave up a touchdown or he gave up another touchdown? He did just that. So his maturity level is wise. He's entering year number three. He's a, he's a rising superstar in the NFL. For a guy like Damari Mathis, you're going to get tested a lot more going forward. And, and I'm excited because how many times he had seven passes defenses, but how many times did he almost have an interception? He was close. I think this is the year where he's going to get there. And as long as these two guys stay healthy, Sarah, for me personally, I have confidence in them as a position group. I do have confidence in guys like a saying Bassey to step up. If K1 gets injured, I have confidence in a guy like Jaquan McMillan. However, with that said, Mike Cliss, as you mentioned a little bit earlier, said he wouldn't be surprised if the Broncos top pick, which at number 67 is a cornerback. I'm not opposed to that, but does that say or does that mean anything negative about a guy like Damari Mathis? I don't think there's any correlation with that. I think that it is, hey, we need a young guy behind Damari, behind Sertan that we know can step up and play because they're looking at more pro-ready style cornerbacks in the NFL draft. That's what they look for. Right, and it's not like you could go into this draft and say, well, no, no, we we ain't trying to hurt Damari Mathis's feelings here with this third round pick. No, no, you get, you can't care about that. Okay. I, I mean, you can't necessarily, we talked about running backs on the last third round Thursday that we did. Like, do you think Javante Williams is going to be, you know, hurt his feelings are going to be hurt if the Broncos draft a running back in round three? Absolutely not. These players, they Damari Mathis basically to these rookies coming in, he's going to know right up here that he's got a huge advantage over any rookie coming in. He's got a year in the NFL already. So he's got that edge. He's worked with Christian Parker. I, I think there's definitely going to be a level of comfortability from him. Not that he's a veteran player or anything like that, but you see when these rookies come in, these guys are swimming with, and they're, they're out there without life jackets. You're throwing them into the deep end and saying, Hey, welcome to the NFL sort of thing. And we saw that moment for Damari Mathis against the chargers. Remember the four pass interference penalties, albeit some questionable calls, 
but we saw him swimming without the life jacket and these rookies are going to come in and have to do the same thing. So I don't think you can worry about that. I think you need to in the draft, the Broncos need to take the best guy, take bet on traits, bet on a guy who's like, Hey, this guy just makes plays out there. This guy has, you know, a freakishly high RAS score, like those type of things like Damari Mathis with Ronald Darby. I mean, you've got to draft guys because you never know when they are going to be your future starters. And I'll even, I'll be honest, like at my show notes, what I said, and like, how do I feel about the cornerback depth? I, I view it as underrated, right? But I still think, okay, well, if there's an injury to Sertan or Mathis, as it stands right now, I'm concerned because look, I, I'm sorry, there is no replacing a guy like Patrick Sertan. And look, you can maybe fill in a guy behind Damari Mathis, but I think Damari Mathis has the potential growth trajectory to be a guy that is also hard to replace as well if he is out of the starting lineup for you defensively. So I said on paper, it doesn't seem like it is better right now considering that, you know, hey, there's there's a lot of young, inexperienced there. You know, you look at Sertan, starting experience. You got Damari Mathis and Asang Basti is the only other guys outside of K1 Williams who have starting experience at cornerback Everybody else behind him, Jaquan has one game. Delonte Hood, Fayon Hicks, Tremont Smith, I mean, they don't have much starting experience in comparison as well. So to me, that is a little bit of a concern. I do think we need to see how some of these guys perform at training camp, specifically under Vance Joseph's defense, under Sean Payton's direction as the new head coach. I like the the position room. I like the talent there. I, just on paper, I'm a little skeptical, right? And if they made, as you mentioned, as we talked about, if they brought in a vet or if they drafted a cornerback with one of their premier draft picks in this year's draft class, to me, I would say, okay, you know what? I, I feel okay about it. I, I really do. I'm going to go back and watch a lot of the tape on some of these young guys, you know, that we did get to see a lot of Damari Mathis, a lot, you know, f- you know, even going through in Jaquan's last game of the regular season here as well. It's small sample size but can he build on that, right? You don't want it to just be a flash in the pan where, hey, you know, you had a great first game, but that's it. You want to see that carry over into training camp, which by the time that, you know, the last snap of the regular season happened to then, it's going to, so much time has passed. Last year doesn't matter anymore. Can you stack on that? And can you continue to make, you know, I- improvements? Can you impress Sean Payton? Can you impress Vance Joseph, who is now the defensive play caller? You know, you're going to have favor from Christian Parker, but is that enough? And I think that question needs to be answered as we get through mini camp right into training camp, which will begin toward the end of July. I'll be there every day at practice as well. Sarah and I will recap all the action. We'll have you covered all throughout the entire off season program. The Broncos they are going to be lifting weights. They're going to be conditioning for the first month of the off season program. And then they'll eventually transition into some football stuff on the field. We'll see if the media is allowed at those things, but if that is the case, you can expect more coverage in depth here. Locked on Broncos, we appreciate you so much, Broncos country, for tuning in, making us your first listen of the day. Make sure you subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast, so you never miss out on an episode as soon as it's made available. Tomorrow's episode of Locked on Broncos, Sarah and I, we talk about a state of the Broncos at the safety position. Is this the year we see Justin Simmons and Caden Stern start? You'll get that on tomorrow's episode, Locked on Broncos.